Julian De Rosier from the IIF here at Minds and Money in London. I am joined now uh, by Illis Martin. Illis, hi, how are you? Nice to see you today, Julian. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. Well, I'm doing well, obviously. Um, so, Illis, before we talk into market conditions, commodities and so on, maybe you want to present yourself for the viewers that don't know you personally. Sure. I have a radio show and podcast which is heard around the world. We're sourced through Yahoo Finance, TMX Money, Dow Jones, Bloomberg. We're on the air every day in Florida during market hours, and we're on all the podcast apps, and we give companies an opportunity in the mining space to reach a global audience of investors. And are you commodity specific? Are you agnostic? What do you look at? In Personally, this I'm market? agnostic, and the, and the show is agnostic, but we have been because it's been low-hanging fruit, and I like the crowd. Uh, we've, been, we've been involved in the mining sector for about 25 years now. Well, this is great. So you basically saw a few cycles in the mining industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we just saw maybe first, let's attack gold. We saw gold popping in the last 30 days, 10% raise from about 1,800 something to uh, uh, close to 1,000, over 2,000. Can you t give us your take on that? What provoked this raise? Is it going to be sustained? And what can we expect on the market condition in gold? Well, I still think that the the equities as a whole and the commodities are, are extremely, extremely undervalued. And But then, you know, we've got another issue. We're at about 2,000. We're hovering around there for a while, which five years ago, two years ago, three years ago would have been really big news. And we would expect the equities to go through the roof. Well, they haven't done so. Yeah. And that's the big issue. In fact, they're still declining the equities, which is a great time to invest right now. When you, when you see this sort of murder in the markets, it, it's a good time to really just sit back and pick a team, pick a company, and put your money in and look away. Well, one thing is sure, and as you mentioned, as equity is not coming in the sector and you've got price of gold at 2000 the same investment case, as you said, just a two years back would have been an automatic signature, an automatic investment idea, investment proposal. Uh, so basically the lagging of the private and equity and of, of bigger guys coming in is really a chance for smaller investors to get in, as you said, choose uh, companies and so on. And then this is about gold. But then we can surely say the same thing about many commodities out there. Which are the commodities you follow right now that you think are really maybe having the same kind of heat as gold has and also a little lag of, of investors in? Well, that's a big question. I think you can look across the board, actually, and see a pullback in the equities, no matter you know, no matter how good the fundamentals are in yep. each of these spaces. We're seeing, we're seeing a pullback and a continuation of a pullback and a consolidation at the same time the commodity prices are you know on our, a modest incline they're doing well and now I'm told I'm told by whoever tells me these things I never remember who they are uh, I'm told that once we hit 2100 then oh, we yeah. see, then we'll see the market move well I'll believe it when I see it the, the, the usual and then when we hit four dollars in cover and then when we hit this and uh, one thing is sure is that people should obviously commodity I mean when you say all across the board for sure we there's been big talk of battery metals I mean scarcity in, in copper. Uh, we have zinc that is going to be missing. We've got still lithium out there. We've got graphite. Basically, almost every single commodity you look at, you've got the new LFP batteries, so iron on also on that. I mean... Has it moved the market. It, has not moved the market. It, it, All the it, hype has done nothing. Exactly. So somehow that means that uh, apart from lithium, which we saw the price skyrocketing, big M&A, big investment, everyone fighting for the commodity, there's some space in the rest of the sector for a lot more equity investment to come in a lot more major taking position in, in, in smaller guys. And how do you think it's, it's, it's going to play? Are we entering a super cycle? Is all that just maybe spontaneous? I think all those are opinions that for me to predict a super cycle would be, would be wrong. So I never make any predictions as a journalist, as I'm sure you don't. But my, my opinion is that uh, unless we see some sort of black swan or mini black swan or some sort of geopolitical crisis, which certainly can happen, we're not going to see a real drive in the equities. And then we will. As soon as that supply chain is stomped on again, somehow, we had COVID before and the pandemic, and, and that sort of, that moved things in, a, in an interesting direction. If we see something like that, then we'll see the boom that everybody wants. But again, since prices are so low, if you have the money to risk, and I say that, I say that with a wink, or, you know, if you really have the, the money to risk, then, then get involved in these sectors. Lithium, you know, to my understanding, I could be wrong, that the, the Chinese are now going to flood the market with it, suppress the price so that, so that they can ultimately control it down the road. Yep. Is that a fact? I don't know. 
But well, how do you invest in that? Well, for sure, for sure, geopolitically, events that have been happening in the past in commodities, like we saw in rare earth with the mm -hmm. Chinese relation to it, with what we're having with the war, with what we see in Chile with the government uh, mm -hmm. legislation change and so on, there is, it seems like there's a storm brewing that some analysts are calling as a perfect storm coming into commodities and happening. You have me almost speechless because, uh, you know, it, it will take that. We'll know it when it's here. Yeah. You know, what we're seeing right now is is a definite pullback. There's a lot of shorting going on, a lot of shorting going on in the market on news. Those are good opportunities to, to get in after the short, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no doubt on that. So then you guys, are, you're based in Florida. So no, I, I, my show's on the air in Florida. I, I've been working remotely from Southern California for 20 Five years. Okay, so okay, <laughs> but my point was being U.S. market. Yeah, so U.S. market. We're not we're not too bad about it, uh, too wrong. Uh, but yeah, so so what's the take and in, in, in what's happening with the U.S.? We got a big bill being signed. I mean, it's it's battery metals. We hear that all over the place. We see investment. We see a lot of things happening. Or investment to produce, for example, batteries, car manufacturers. Uh, but do you, do you still see that dribbling down in the U.S.? How, how's the market in in the what U.S. By dribbling down, you mean the equities? Yes, exactly. So basically, obviously, at one point, rather than just building factories, one will have to extract copper. One will have to extract more commodities. Are we, as you said earlier, we're still not there yet, and we're looking at if it's going to happen. But the legislation was a big change in the U.S. lately. That should really move the equities. We may be at the beginning of that phase, but we've been we've been at the beginning of that phase now for two years. Yeah. So we're still waiting for the, you know, for the pylon, more or less. It's like when you have a, a snowstorm on one of the freeways in <laughs> in the upper Midwest on I-70 in 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 Kansas, and or there's some fog and and uh, you know two or three cars pile up and then 50 pile up and then it's a big deal and everybody hears about it. We're waiting for that to happen. So we so we wait for the first car to break basically, yeah, and then yeah. everything's gonna is gonna happen afterwards. Yeah. Absolutely, it's just like the first domino falling for sure. Um, um, and then for everyone who wants to listen more of what you have to say, more of your show, more of your guests, who, who are, are you having guests on your show? What's happening exactly? How is your day structure when, you, when you're on air? How's my day structure when I'm on air? Absolutely. Uh, well, the companies that sponsor our program, they have interviews and they reach our global audience of investors, retail investors, fund managers, brokers, family offices, and that sort of thing. So companies usually will do interviews with me. It'll air every day in all of our venues. It's never live. It's all highly edited because I'm obsessed about about quality and, and people have short attention spans. So if it doesn't move, occasionally I'll interview an analyst or so-called expert. They either know more or less than me, but it doesn't make any difference because in the end, none of us know. And, uh, you know, that's it. And I keep showing up at these conferences. All right. Well, this is great to hear. Well, it is for sure. Thank you very much for this interview. Maybe you want to tell more about your website, how people can log on, listen to it, and so on. Two ways to get to my website, ellis.gold or ellismartinreport.com or just Google me. Send me a note. All right. Well, that was Ellis Martin, uh, Julian DeRosi from the Mines and Money in London. Thank you very much for your time, Ellis. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.